Hi, everyone. I'm Elsa McKenzie, as you just heard, the Group Strategy Director at Global. And I'm really fascinated by attention and how the brain works. I could talk about it for hours. But as we've only got 15 minutes today, I'm going to share why I believe that audio is your secret weapon in the era of distraction. The world can feel pretty overwhelming these days. I feel like I'm often doing multiple things at once. When I'm in my Pilates class, I'm thinking about what I need to buy for dinner that night. When I'm on the train commuting, I'm often checking my emails and I'm listening to the radio on my phone. And in the evening when I'm watching TV, I find myself scrolling on social media and I can't even remember why I picked up my phone in the first place. We're consuming more hours of media than ever before, up to a huge 16 hours last year. You might look at this and think, brilliant, loads of opportunities to connect with people. But this growth in hours is because we're often doing multiple things at once. And this is the challenge that we all face. How can we create campaigns that are effective when people are most likely distracted? Well, the good news is audio has some strengths that I think can help us here. So first off, we're listening to more audio than ever before. We've seen significant growth in people listening via connected devices, so things like smart speakers and mobile phones. And this is partly driven by newer content like podcasts and music streaming, but live radio is also in great health, with 88% of adults listening to an average of 20 and a half hours each and every week. So it's fair to say that audio really does surround our lives. <laughs> and <laughs> there's a whole host of data that proves audio's effective this credentials. Um, all the way from things like brand trust and consideration through to that all-important short-term sales driving. In fact, the Radio Centre are going to be back here today at midday talking about uh, digital attribution and how radio is a brilliant platform for performance brands, so make sure you come back for that. And one of the reasons that audio is so effective is because it, it's because it works across the attention spectrum. This really is audio's superpower. But it's very different to how visual attention works. Attention's not new, but its use to kind of plan and evaluate media plans is relatively recent, and it's particularly popular within the digital ecosystem. And lots of agencies and clients are now starting to use it in their planning tools. So it's a really great process, and actually um, eye tracking is the real gold standard here. But it would be dangerous to assume that audio attention works in the same way. You can't apply those metrics that you get from eye tracking to listening. And we don't yet have a shared language and understanding. So words like high and active and low and passive are often used quite interchangeably. And when you read articles talking about the importance of high attention platforms, you could think that's what you're looking for in all media. But the reality is, whatever language you use, this type of attention is incredibly limited. It takes a lot of energy for our brain to process everything that's going on around us. So it shifts lots of, that heavy list, lots of the heavy lifting to the subconscious. And if you try to attend to everything that's happening, you'll find that you quickly fail. If you've ever seen the TV programme I literally just told you, you'll see this cognitive limitation being harnessed to really comic effect. The contestants are desperately trying to remember everything that's happening, but they can't. So how does audio attention work then? Well, spoiler alert, it's pretty complicated. Our ears are different to our eyes, and the landscape of sound stretches far and wide, way beyond what you can see. Those eye tracking studies work because your eyes are either looking at something or they're not, and there's no equivalent metric when it comes to listening. <coughs> but even eye tracking doesn't capture the full range of attention, because attention is split across your senses, what you're looking at, what you can hear, and everything that you're doing at once. And this was highlighted in the brilliant attention research from Thinkbox last year. They recognise that pe when people are watching TV, they're often doing other things at once. And so they really wanted to work out how much attention is left over for processing TV ads. 
the good news is that even when people were distracted, they found lots of, attempt, they found lots of processing happening. But the thing that's really interesting from an audio point of view is when they started to analyze what made TV ads perform better when attention was divided. And this is where they saw that our eyes and ears really don't work independently. The best performing ads communicated information in both a visual and an audio way. And the other thing they found, which was really interesting, was that people were significantly more likely to recall what they'd seen than what they'd, sorry, what they'd heard even, than what they'd seen when they were distracted. So, it's clear that audio plays a really important role in the attention and recall of TV ads. But do we see the same thing when we look at audio ads alone? We commissioned two complementary pieces of research in order to really understand how audio advertising works when attention is divided. First off, we worked with neuroscience experts Walnut on a lab-based study where we looked at the neuro response to ads when people were either listening to the audio alone or where they were distracted by doing a spot the difference task at the same time. Then to validate these findings in the real world, we worked with Tapestry on a large scale diary research project, which involved over 3,000 people and we captured over 7,000 different audio listening occasions. And for each of those occasions, we asked people both what they were listening to and what they were doing at the same time. So this is starting to give us a really good understanding of how attention is split across the senses. And one of the big findings is that audio attention isn't binary. It's a real oversimplification to try to think of it in that way. That high-low just doesn't work. So to analyse all this data, we came up with an audio attention score based on a really simple calculation. As people looked back on the previous 24 hours and shared all of their different audio listening occasions, we asked them to score their attention to what they were listening to from one to five, with one being no attention, five being most of my attention. Then we also asked them to score everything else they were doing at the same time individually, but this time the score was reversed, and the average of these was the audio attention score. Sounds complicated, but to bring it to life, <laughs> if I'm walking home from the train station and I'm listening to the newsagent's podcast, I would give my listening a five, the walking a four, which gives me an audio attention score of 4.5. But in contrast to this, if I'm getting ready in the morning and I'm running around and I'm listening to Capital in the background, I'm getting ready, I'm putting a wash on, I'm eating, you can see that the audio attention score is far lower here. But as well as understanding the attention score, we also wanted to understand what content they were listening to, on what platform, why they were listening, where they were, who they were with, who they were with, a huge wealth of data to help us understand the breadth of audio and listening and how attention maps onto it. We then took all this data and <laughs> created an audio attention framework. And this really starts to help visualize how audio attention exists on a continuum. So on the left-hand side, you've got focused attention where most of your attention is on the audio content. Then as you move to the right, your attention becomes more divided and that's because you're giving more of your attention to the other things that you're doing at the same time. When it comes to why you're listening, in that more focused state, it tends to be because you're winding down, relaxing, you want to feel up to date. Then as attention becomes more divided, audio is being used uh, as part of my usual routine or on in the background to help me get through the day. We tend to give more focused attention to things like audiobooks and podcasts, whereas music streaming and music radio is often listened to in combination with other activities. And we see that focused listening tends to over-index for the evening with that more divided attention happening across the day. So hopefully you can all see that at the back. I didn't realise quite how big this room would be. Um, but hopefully that's starting to give you a really good understanding of all those different breadth of different audio listening occasions and how attention maps onto it. But we also wanted to understand, does the level of attention you're paying to the audio impact the effectiveness of any ads that you hear at that time? So we asked the research participants to also tell us if they could recall hearing any advertising and if they could, which brands it was for. 
And then we plotted those important recall metrics against the audio attention scores. So from the story I've told so far, you might be able to take a good guess as to what we found here. Ad recall was incredibly similar across the attention spectrum. So people were recalling hearing an ad in, up in close to a third of those audio listening occasions across the past 24 hours. And we also saw a really similar picture when it came to brand recall. In fact, we recorded over 670 different brands being mentioned, from big national brands like Tesco through to challenger brands like Starling and Bank, and lots of local brands were kind of in there as well. So the data is showing that audio advertising works regardless of your attention level. And the reason for this is that your ears are always on. They're always scanning for information that's relevant for you to attend to. So in this next section, I'm going to briefly cover why relevance and familiarity are so important. It's worth pausing for a second just to remember that every second of every day, our brain is busy processing everything going on around us. It's a real sensory bombardment, but we manage it with ease. And that's because our brain is expert at tuning into the things that it thinks are important for us in that moment. So from a relevance perspective, this could be things like if you're crossing the road, you hear a horn honking, or it could be hearing your name across a crowded room. But in the advertising world, relevance is things like being an existing customer of a brand, being in market and hearing a relevant uh, offer or promotion. And our busy brain also latches onto things that are familiar. So that first few seconds of that song you love or hearing your child crying from the other room. But in our research, we saw that things that were familiar also worked in the advertising world. So recognising the voice used in the ad, having a catchy jingle, or even having heard that ad before. So I'm now going to just turn very briefly to the neuroscience research, just to talk a bit more about why familiarity is particularly interesting when we're distracted. So... But we started to ask people to do the spot the difference task when they were listening to audio in the background. We saw that we, we saw a much stronger neuro, neuro response to brand names in the ad than for the people who were listening to the audio advertising alone, which might seem strange. But when we're in a distracted state, our brain finds it much more enjoyable to kind of recognize and process those brand cues. Whereas when we're in a more attentive state, we actually sometimes see a slightly more negative reaction from the brand as it recognises that the ad is different to the content that it's chosen to listen to. So all of this is showing how clever our brain is whoops, <laughs> there, at um, processing most of the things that are happening around us on a subconscious level, but then tuning into those things that are relevant or familiar, sometimes at a neuro-only level and sometimes in a way that we'll recall later. So to quickly recap then, audio has three strengths that I think will really help you win in the era of distraction. You've just seen how it works across the attention continuum, both when attention's focused and when it's divided. And this is adding to the huge breadth of data we've got about how effective audio is. <coughs> and because there's so much content on so many different devices, it really does surround our lives, which gives you more media moments to target. But if you really want to take advantage of everything that audio offers, it's important that you design for distraction. What does this mean? Well, it means recognising that most encounters with your ad are probably going to be in a distracted state. So it's important that you invest in distinctive audio assets, things like voices, music, and those sonic logos, and use them everywhere across the marketing mix. It's important that you brand early and that you brand often. And it's really important to also look to entertain with your advertising to really drive that positive emotion. Sound is a real shortcut to emotion, but too often we're creating ads that assume that people are in market and they're interested in product benefits and offers. Whereas we know that if we use storytelling, if we really tap into characters and dialogue, that's going to be a lot more effective. So I'm, I know we're at time, but I'm just going to very quickly play you an audio ad, which I think is a really brilliant example of how this works. Squad car four, you copy? Ooh, how about Starlet? 
Mm. I love chopping hearts. This ring is really squiggy. Imagine if we could use the rings for handcuffs to catch the baddies. <laughs> Maybe when we've got them, we give them a squishy bear to give them a cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> what car for? Have you been eating Haribo again? Maybe. So to end, the reality is that we're very rarely focused on just one thing. Attention is shared across our senses and activities in a constantly shifting balance. But it, the answer isn't to create campaigns that demand more, more attention. Instead, it's about shifting our approach to really make the most of the attention that we've got. Our ears and our brain are expert at working with divided attention and tuning into the things that are relevant and familiar. And this is why I believe audio is your secret weapon. <laughs>